when you're not rendering and you don't need to, you want to free up space on your machine. Edit, purge, all memory and disk cache. Free up some space. All right, let's dive into it. So I'm going to make a new comp. 1920, 1080, 24 frames. And let's do 10 seconds for tonight. Remember, time code goes hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Okay, we're going to start off tonight with something simple. And many of you may have already figured it out. But I'm going to start off with kerning. Kerning is the letter spacing between, it's the spacing in between your letters. And when you want to kern, you look at the letter in between two of them. So if I want this E to be a little bit further away, I want it to be even on each side. So now I'm going to make sure visually the ERN, and then I just keep working my way through it until I'm happy with the way that it looks. All you have to do is put your curse between the letters and hold down the Alt or Option key, and then hit the left or right arrows on your keyboard to kern in After Effects. And that's going to be very important because if you've got a title for a show or a movie and it's just one letter, or I mean one word, you're going to want it to look its best. That's kerning. You just put the cursor where you want, hold down Alt or Option, and hit the left and right arrow keys. Next, letting. As you already know, you could just double click over here and with the number highlighted, use the up and down keys or hold down shift while hitting the up and down keys to move it more. Letting is the space between lines of type. So watch how letters connect if you don't want them to. That is letting. Letting you can change over here, but kerning, more or less, you want to do it by hand. The space in between words, I believe, is called tracking. And this right here will spread out your word uniformly if you want. So I'm just going to select the number, hold down shift, press my up and down key until I've got to where I want quick little typography. So make sure you check your kerning and your letting in your projects because I'm going to be keeping an eye on that because motion design is graphic design, including time and space. I'm going to draw a line. I hit command R to get my ruler and I'm going to use just a pull down to get the letters where I want them. Going to have to increase my letting. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate this. And on one, it'll just be letting, and on the other, it'll be kerning. So I'm going to do the same technique, but two different ways. And we're going to do our recap that way. So I've got letting and I've got kerning. Letting, I'll have come down from this invisible line. So that's going to be position. It's going to be position for both of them. Because we're just animating the type downwards. Okay. And I'm going to work backwards for this one. Let's just say it's about half a second. I'm going to click my diamond to add a keyframe. And now I can just go back using my previous. So I'm going to work backwards because I have them laid out how I want. So letting is going to come down from the top. So I'm going to move it up above the line. It has to be completely above the line like that. And kerning is going to move in the opposite direction. So I'm going to make sure they're both set up like such. Happy with that. I'm going to easy ease these because I want that smoother motion like such. All right, now I want them to look like they're magically appearing from behind this invisible line. If I use a mask, I'll do a mask on the bottom. Now remember, to create a mask, you have your layer selected and you use a shape tool or the pen tool. 
So that's selected. I'm going to draw like that. Now watch what happens. The mask will move with the layer. That's not what I want in this instance. So in order to get that to work, I have to pre-compose the layer by right-clicking. I'll call it Kerning PC. Move all attributes. That has to be clicked on. And what that did was it put all my keyframes, effects, and speed graph inside this pre-comp. So if I put the mask on the pre-comp, so with that pre-comp selected, I use the shape tool. Now, it's staying put. I've got to change this to subtract because I don't want to show it's inside that mask. Now it's appearing magically from behind that. Add shows what's inside a mask. Subtract hides what's inside the mask area. So that's working. Now I just have to do my letting. And for the letting, I'll do an alpha mat uh, review. So I've got two options. I'm going to do a fill here. That's solid. So to change that, I click on the word fill. Make it solid. There we go. And I'll make it a color that's easy to see. Turn off the stroke. OK, I'm going to move forward to where the type is already where I want it. So if I make my shape up here and I want it to reveal there, I'll call this my mat. Remember my saying, a mask goes over your face, like a mask you put on Halloween. So that's on top. What I have below. I'm in my switches for this, and I need to be in my modes. I click on switches and modes. And then under track mat, I set that to alpha mat. So now it's going to magically reveal that type the way it should. And let's see, letting, let me hit M for my mask here. Let's try add. Okay, I did this backwards, that's funny. But you get the idea. I'll just play it backwards. So that's how that works. Like such, they're magically appearing from the line. I could have either pre-composed and put the mask on the pre-comp or used an alpha mat. We'll go dive deeper into alpha mats and alpha invert mats coming up. but creatively. Let me scale this up so it's a lot larger. All right. Now, for tonight's lecture, we're gonna build off of those, I just hit Command or Control and the comma, I mean the, yeah, it's the comma key that uh, hid my guide. All right. So we know how to mask, we know how to create shapes, we know alpha mats. We're gonna tie it all together with this next part. So I'm just making sure no one's got any questions on that quick review. Okay, no questions. All right. I'm gonna use my pen tool and I'm gonna make a shape layer instead of a mask and use my shape layer as an alpha mat. And you go saying, well, why are you doing that? If I do a feather, I, I mean, a, a mask, I can feather it. But I'm just showing you some things to consider because with the shape layer, I've got my add feature and I can add effects and, you know, really spice it up. So I'm going to do a shape layer for this. Let me deselect. So with nothing selected, I'm going to draw my shape layer. I'm going to do it without the fill first, just so I can see what I'm doing. Make it easier on myself. And then I'll add the fill later. Make it a little thinner so I could see the artwork. All right, so I'll click here, click and drag to get my Bezier curve handles. I'm gonna go a little bit on the inside because I don't have to be all the way to the edge for what I'm doing for this lesson. Stay on the inside because I don't want the white outside edge. 
don't need to get every pixel. You know, just get the parts you want. I'm doing this with the trackpad, and I'm not very good with trackpads, but I don't have enough ports to plug in my mouse. That's why I'm doing this. And there we are, last one right there. Okay. So there's my shape. Now I'm gonna add the fill and get rid of the stroke. Just like that. And I'm gonna see if anyone has any questions. Nope, all right. Okay, and you're already done? Okay, good. All right, so we're gonna start thinking like motion designers. I'm gonna call this wing. I've got a shape. I don't need to duplicate. I mean, I don't need to redo all this work. I've already got this. So first step, I'm gonna move my anchor point to where I want it. That's always number one. I'll move it right here. That's where I want it to meet the imaginary body. So that's step one. We moved our anchor point. Okay, now I'm going to set the artwork below as an alpha mat. And there is our wing. Now, remember with parenting, I'm gonna move this wing and then do undo. Watch what happens when I move the wing. The art does not move with it. So I know I've got to parent the artwork to the wing. So I'm just going to pick whip from the art to the wing. Now when I move my wing, the art moves with it. The art is parented to that shape layer. Okay. If I start rotating this, let me hit R for rotate on the wing. It's not moving the way that I want. I don't have the flexibility I'd like. So that means I'm gonna leave my modes by clicking toggle switches and modes and go to my 3D enable. Now I can rotate the wing in many different directions and the artwork is not following it properly because I've got a 3D enable the art layer. Now it's working properly. That's the first bit of troubleshooting. Both of them had to be 3D enabled. So now I can get some really interesting motion. My parenting is all set. I'm gonna see if anyone has a question. Nope, okay. So, this is parented. I've got my texture, I've got my shape. Suppose my client comes along and says, I want to have an animated green stroke around this. I'm just picking green because you can see it. An animated green stroke to add some life and make it look a little more cartoony. Well, that's not a problem because this time I used a shape layer. If I hit Command D or Control D to duplicate that layer, I hit Enter to rename it. I'll call it wing stroke. I've got to click the eyeball to show it. So now I can get rid of my fill. Hit OK. Add a stroke to it. And we said green, so I'll make it green. Something bright so it pops off of the black. Makes it easier to see. And I'll make it a little bit thicker. Like such. All right, now this wing stroke, I'm going to parent to the original wing. So now when I move my wing, the stroke moves with it and the texture moves with it. And they're all 3D enabled because I already duplicated that once it was 3D enabled. So this gives me the liberty to say, okay, I don't feel like animating this, I can do add Let's try wiggle paths. And I will increase the detail, lower the size a little bit, just to give it a little bit of life. And right there, 
I've already got some motion happening. I could change corner to smooth if I want. And I can even increase or decrease the number of wiggles per second. Let's try four to give it a little bit more of an erratic look. Great. So we've got that extra motion. And I didn't have to really do anything. So now we've got something interesting happening. Let's check the chat. Okay, we're still good. So. Everything is parented to my wing shape. I'm going to hit R for rotate. And I'm going to put a wiggle on it. Let's see what the X does. Okay, so I don't want to move too much on the X. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and click on that X. And I'll start typing in wiggle. There it is. I double click to finish it. Let's try four times a second, comma. Uh, let's do an amount of 25, something small. Remember, you have to click out of the expression. You'll add an unwanted space, and then the expression will not work. Okay, that's really not realistic. So let's try 24 times a second and 70. And I click out. See, there's my text. I click out to get the arrow. That's a little bit better. I'm going to change this to 44 just for the fun of it. Okay, fine. Now, the Y. That one, we're going to need a bigger number on it to have it looking good. So let's Alt or Option click on that stopwatch. Start our expression. Double click. Let's say 60 times a second, comma, 120. Let's see what that looks like. Click out of the expression. See, now we're getting a little bit more motion. That might be a bit too much. Let's try 80. That's a bit better. Now the Z, I can hit Alt or Option, click on the stopwatch, add my expression, double click to fill it. Let's do 40 times a second, and let's try 120 here. See, now we've got that more flapping look. Like such. Okay? I didn't have to do a lot of work to get that look. So let's... Motion blur this. Motion blur is turned on. So now we're getting some wild results. So let's turn off motion blur. And let's try pre-composing it. So I'm going to pre-compose the whole wing together. Move all attributes into a new comp. Hit OK. And let's try throwing motion blur on this. See, now I'm not getting that weird effect anymore. But I'm not getting much motion blur either. So let's try... adding an effect. I think CC Force motion blur might be the one we want. So now we're starting to get that same effect happening. Let me drop down my resolution. So let's lower that to three. Change my shutter angle a little bit. We don't need the native motion blur on because there's none added to it. Okay, now let's try six. Now we're getting something a little bit more interesting. Let's change this number. Take a look. So playing around with your settings will help you get that look that you want. Quickly and easily. Like such. If I need to change anything, I just double click on my pre-comp to go inside it, and I can edit this however I want.
Like if the client says he wants the stroke on the wing to be brown, I could just change it in here. Go back out to my comp. And there's my revised artwork. And let's zoom in a bit. Take a look at that. Let's give it a spiky look to get more of a hairiness to it. There we go. Give it a little bit less of a geometric look. And a more rougher natural look. I already had the shape layer for the wing. I duplicated it to get the stroke look. I used the shape as an alpha mat. I parented everything to that, 3D enabled all my layers, and simply put an expression on each axis for how much wiggle I wanted to get that look. Then I pre-composed everything together and put another effect on the pre-comp to affect the entire piece evenly and uniformly, like such. And that is our dragonfly wing. I will use a star for this. All right, and let's make this a little brighter. And I'll throw an effect on it of glow. So here's your project panel. And the two white arrows next to it let you go back and forth between effects controls and the project. Right down in here, 8BPC, that's short for 8 bits per channel. If I hold down Alt and click on there, Alt or Option, it'll go from 8 to 16. I click one more time. Now I'm at 32 bits per channel. You want to be at 32 bits per channel whenever possible when you're doing light effects. I'm going to throw a couple on here just to uh, show you the difference. So you see how I go extreme with my effects settings, the parameters, to see what they do. And then I subtly dial it back to get the look that I want. And just a reminder, Whatever panel you're clicked on, the one that's highlighted in blue, if I duplicate in here, I'll duplicate that layer. But if I'm selected in this panel with my effect and I duplicate it, I duplicate the effect. It's always based off of what panel you're in and what you've got selected when you duplicate something. So just be careful of that. I'll duplicate that, delete that duplicate. Okay, so watch the glow when I go from 32 bits back down to eight. I lost a lot of information. You get more dynamic range and more interest at the 32 bits per channel. Oh. And also, if I'm at full res, then you'll really notice it. See? Huge difference between 16 and 32. So a general tell is when you type in light, basically anything that's a light effect, you should be at 32 bits per channel for that. Let's try light rays. There they are. And remember, anything with a crosshair, you can just click once and then click where you want that to happen. So let's see what the radius does. Okay. That's what that effect's going to do from the center. But as you'll note, it's not going to the edges of the screen because of this bounding box around the star. There's our alpha. There's the bounding box. So 
I'm going to copy this effect and then delete it. Pre-compose my star because there's my bounding box. Right click, pre-compose. Move all attributes. Now, if I paste the effect onto the pre-comp, it's going to the edges of the screen. Like such. Another bit of troubleshooting. Even though they're all light effects, they have their own influence on the art. So it's a matter of experimenting and remembering to pre-compose when and where you need to. To get the look you want. And anything with the stopwatch can be animated. The more complex your light effects, the longer it'll take to render them. So just be careful of that because of all this 32 bits per channel of data that we've got going on. See, even with my machine, it's gonna be a slow render for that. Okay. So we learned what you're clicked on when you duplicate something and where you're at affects what's duplicated, okay? So I'm just creating a pre-comp called logo. And this one, no one has to follow along. You can just watch. And then if you have a question, I'll do it again. So let me set my anchor point to the, I'll do the bottom left corner. I'm holding down command or control to snap it there. And I add my text. And we'll pretend that's our logo, okay? So I've got multiple elements. And let's add some interest to this. Let's do P for position. Go one second in. I'm going to work backwards because this is where I want it to end up. Let's have it come in from the outside. All right, so it's going to pass in and be there. So that means I'm going to want a mask on this edge. So that's where I want my type to be. And for here, I'm gonna scale this. And let's say I, I'm gonna work backwards. Let's say I start from there. This is coming in a little too early. It's all about your animation hierarchy because it needs something to pass through. Like such, okay, good. Now I'm just gonna Pre-compose, I mean, right-click, easy easies. And uh, just a reminder, click speed graph to go there. Click here to magnify it. Let's have it slow in to that and speed out of the first frame. So it's going faster out, slower in. Click here to get out of your speed graph. And this is how you zoom in and out of your timeline. So there's our motion. I could actually even slide this down a little bit more because once I change the speed, that's going to change the timing of it, the velocity that I changed. Okay, perfect. So, this is important. If there's any questions, I'm going to check with each step. Type Q in the chat if you got a question. These two layers are inside the pre-comp logo. I added some motion. 
now I've got to let's think if I want okay if I want to see only the type on this side I'll do an alpha mat like that I'll call it mat click on my logo layer I'm in my switches I need to be in modes change my track mat to alpha mat now this is working properly, okay? That's what I want. Suppose my client comes back and says, I wanna change the colors and swap it out with our new logo colors. Well, if all my artwork is the same and I'm only changing a few things, I don't feel like doing any re-keyframing and wasting my time here is the solution. This is how you create templatable animation. You'll be doing a lot of templatable animation at your job where they'll say, design this so it can be used again for something else. Here is the whole trick to templatable design. I made a pre-comp, I called it logo. Inside that is my logo information and my keyframes. Okay, this is very important. I'm going to do it wrong first. So everybody watch. Pretend the client's logo is purple and blue and they change the color of the type to red. So if I change my information here, it's gonna overwrite the old one. And that's not what I wanna do. So if I change this to purple, and blue. I lost all that work and I said I'd make this red. So I'm changing that over here in the character panel. Clicking on the color then, double click. Okay. That's wrong, you know. So I'm gonna hit undo, 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 undo till we're back to where we were. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Rather than change anything in here, if I select my logo in the project panel in Command D or Control D duplicate it, logo two, now I can double click and open this one up because they've got different names and I can change the color of this. So, because it's a whole different pre-comp. You have to change, duplicate the pre-comp then you can make your changes. So if I go purple here and then blue there, and then I'll make the text red, like I said, okay. So here's logo two, there's logo one. I'm gonna call this main animation. So pretend we've done some work for the client before where we've got a scene. Um, I'll just put a uh, solid behind it. And let's make it yellow because there's no yellow really. I'll do like a pale yellow. And I'll put logo one on there. And what I'm going to do is quickly animate it off the screen like from off the screen. So let's say it's just a couple frames really fast. Comes in off the side. I'll even throw a motion blur on it. Going to my switches, there's my motion blur. Motion blur is enabled. There we go, that's happening. And let's throw an effect on it while we're here. Let's do Let's do glow for the fun of it. And we're still at 32 bits, good. So let's lower the rate, the threshold, increase the radius. Okay, here we go. So we'll go from here. And I'll keyframe animate the radius and the threshold. 
to here and I'll change those to zero. So the effect goes away. So here's our animation. Like such. So now they changed their logo. Rather than having to go through all this work of what we did in for the pre-comp and everything inside of it, what I do with this logo selected, the old one, in the timeline, and the new logo selected in the project panel, if I hold down Alt or Option and drag it onto the old one, it swaps it out. Keeps all my effects, all my keyframing, all my velocity, uh, speed graph changes, everything. It's just hot swaps out and puts in the new logo. So that's how you can keep working templatable. Like say you've got a corporation you're working for and one team is called the art department and the other team is called legal. And we've got our new logos. If I change this name to legal on every part of my template, it'll change. I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna duplicate this again in the project panel and I'm gonna rename it. I'll call it logo legal. Double click to open it in my timeline. So now I've got their new branding colors and I can change that to legal. Go back to my main animation. There's the company logo, but if they need this for a presentation for the legal department, I've got my logo selected. I've got my new one. I want to replace it. Hold down Alt or Option. Drag it into the timeline. Now, all the effects, all the keyframing, everything's still there. This is how you can keep your work templatable. Pre-compose it, duplicate it in the project panel, then you gotta hold down Alt or Option with both of them selected as you drag it in. Now, I think that was the last thing we were gonna cover. Yep, okay, that was. So I'm going to show you one more thing because we've got the time. Pretend that moving forward, the company wants to add something interesting in addition to what we've already got. What I can do to keep this templatable, so that whatever I swap out here will still work, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Layer new, adjustment layer. Anything I add to the adjustment layer will affect anything below it. So let's say they want to do Try kaleidoscope just for the fun of it. Wow. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Anything with the stopwatch can be animated. So say we go to here, and then we go down to size, go forward a little bit, change that to zero. Let's see what that does. So I get rid of the effect. Okay. So we're not gonna do that. It's a little too chaotic. Let's pick something more subtle. Let's just say they wanna throw a film burn at the beginning. So let's start off with the burn. And go forward a little bit. Get rid of the burn. There's that effect. There's the legal department. And suppose they just want this new look with the company logo. Well, I just grab it here. I've got to have the logo selected down here. Hold down Alt or Option. Swaps out the logo. 
and all the new stuff that we added is on the adjustment layer. That's one way to work templatable so that you can swap out your artwork and keep all of your other motion and keyframing and effects like such. All right, so now I'm going to start looking at people's projects. Now, remember, import footage as, click, retain layer sizes, hit import, and here's the pre-comp with all the artwork in there. So this is one layer. Uh, I'm assuming there's no rigging needed. It's just gonna be like a background extra. Okay, so let me check the chat real fast. Okay, 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 good. This is new. And then Uh, I'm not seeing the stuff up there, so I'll come back to that. And I'll show you a little something there real quick. All right. Now we've got our character here. I'm going to put the anchor point at the bottom. Hit S for scale. You know what? Let's do right click. Oh, okay, so let's turn off the chain. Now let's try right clicking. Won't let me separate the dimensions. Interesting. All right, so. See if there's a way we can add a little bit of squash and stretch, but only to there. Let's see. So if I do this subtly small one, so I guess what we could do is I could click there. Let's say after a second, add a similar keyframe, go a few frames. Let's try 98. Then over a little bit of time, go to 100 again. Select it all, ease it. You could also click on the word. Right click, easy ease. Let's see what that looks like. See, now we got just a little bit of that bobble. Yes, there's a little bit of life to them. Let's slide this down a little bit. Like that. Okay, so we've got that working. Now, let's see if we can add a loop out to that and have that work. I've got my keyframes. So there'll be that. And uh, I'll add one more frame here at the end. So what that's gonna do is say, no change for like a second. And then as it loops, there'll be a little bit of a pause. That's with that similar keyframe. It's the same as this one. It'll help the, help sell this uh, animation. So I've got my keyframes. I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option, click and scale. Let's try loop out, double click, click out of the expression and let's see what happens. There's a little bobble, there's a pause, there's a little bobble and a pause. So now we got a little bit of life to it with just that happening, like such. Okay, not bad. Little boys are a bit more animated than that. I should know because I have a son. So let's try an adjustment layer above this character real quick. 
And no, you know what? Since let's just put it on the character. Let's try bend. CC bend. Bender. Go throw a bender on him. Now remember, whenever you see these crosshairs, top, here's the top, bottom, or base, that's going to be the bottom of his feet. So now we've got an amount like such. So I like to just be a little bit. I could either throw an expression on him so he's constantly bouncing back and forth. Let's try that. I'm going to Alt or Option click on there. We'll try Wiggle. Double click. Let's say once per second and an amount of 12. Let's see what that's going to look like. See? Instant interest. And if the kid's really fidgety, you do 11 times a second with an amount of 22. Like that. Just showing you how thinking through your motion and doing expressions here and there gives you a little bit more life. And you could do like a little blink on the character pretty easily as well. But uh, I like your artwork. And so, Kelly, you see how you can add a little bit of life to your background characters pretty quick and easily? Yeah, so always be thinking if something is alive. It should have some motion. Like if you've got flowers outside, there's going to be a little bit of swaying to them from the breeze. So just that subtle little bit of motion you can get pretty quickly and easily with very little bit of keyframes. Do you have uh, any other questions on any of your stuff? Oh, um, no. Okay, because your other character, the rig was clean, you know. All right, good. So I'm going to... Save, and I'm going to hit U, and I'm going to hit E for expression, and then it was Shift S for scale. So now it's safe. So now you can see where I put everything in there, and I should probably be able to twirl down here for you to see that expression, and twirl down here to show you that expression. There we go. Very fun. Like I said, once you start thinking of these effects that I'm showing you, expressions, just that little bit of wiggle, putting in that extra keyframe so there's going to be a pause, then looping it out, a little bit of bending, just adds that life and interest very quickly and easily and takes your work into a more professional area where there's that subtle little attention to details. And that's the type of stuff that's going to... Uh, Get your foot in the door. And like I said, this is not me criticizing anyone. It's my job to help you push your designs further and show you things you may not have considered. So that's what I'm here for. Not It's not a criticism of anybody. Okay, so that's everybody. Okay, now the igloo, AE design. Oh, okay. There it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that and put the artwork in the same folder just to make my life a little easier. So that way I don't have to relink them. So now I reopen it. See, and there's everything. Oh, that's cute. I love the flapping of the uh, flippers. Great, 
control there. Lots of nice little bit of life. Fun. Now, the penguin wouldn't fade on unless there was some mist passing. Some mist. Sorry, it's hard to talk with this mask on. So maybe you could have him pop up from behind the igloo. So if layer-wise, he's below the igloo. He'll still have that motion, but you could have him pop out from behind it rather than fade on. Very nice. A little bit of blinks would be good. And a uh, little bit of clouds going by in the distance. Add a little bit of depth. I'm like what I'm seeing. So, oh, good, good, good. Wow. See, this is what I'm talking about. Loving it. Working like a pro. You've got your pre-comp with all your stuff in there to keep your layer files clean. This is great. Hit the U key. There's all your keyframes. Just as I thought, you 3D enabled to get that motion. Brilliant. This is what I like to see. Great. Great use of everything you've learned so far. Oh, and a little bit of wiggling of the feet. I didn't even notice that. One thing you got to watch out for, wherever that's happening, if he's moving around really fast, you might not see that foot wiggling. Because I missed it. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, I just didn't have this thing viewed in full. Perfect. Yeah, those subtle little motions get lost when he's moving around, but you waited until the penguin wasn't moving anymore. Brilliant. Very nice. Very happy with that. Like I said, a little bit of eye blinks, and you'll be sitting pretty. Like, start thinking of where the text is coming in. There's the eye right there. S for scale. All you got to do is click on the chain to make it non-uniform. Click scale, go forward a few frames. If you wanna add anticipation, you could make it a little bit bigger than 100%. So it goes up a little bit. Go a few frames. And remember, you don't have to go all the way down to zero. It'll look more like a blink if you leave a little bit of that, let's see, let's use the arrow key to get a little bit more. There we go. Then I can just copy and paste this keyframe. Wait, that's my anticipation. That's the original size. So now I paste it there. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, so there's a blink. Now, remember, this is fully open. If I don't want him to blink too much, I just add another keyframe right there. And let's ease all these. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Let's take a look at that eye real quick. Go back to here. I think that anticipation was way too subtle. Let's go up a little bit more. And I'm going to make the anticipation take a little longer and last a little longer. Now let's see what it looks like. There we go. You get it done right once. Then I can just Alt or Option click on there and add my loop out. Double click to finish it. Click outside the expression. See, there you go. Just get looking the way you want once. And if you want to pause in it, just add that extra keyframe where there's no change in between. Like if I think he's blinking too much, I can just drag that one out a little bit further. And now the penguin will be blinking with one more second added to that to add some extra pause. See, just like that. Fun times. All right, very nice work. 
I'm going to send you this for reference. All right, let's go back to Dino's folder. For some odd reason, Dino, I'm not seeing your work. It's invisible. And sometimes you have to do it through delegate uh, go to the grid, then go to like my apps, Google Drive, shared with me, and put it in that way. Let me refresh again, see if I see anything. Yeah, if not, um, you can email me the file tonight, and I'll take a look at it when I get home, and uh, send you a, a video screen recording of my my feedback. Does anyone else? Okay. Um, yeah, try and resend it that way. Great. Yeah, and if anyone else have anything, uh, let's see, was Shane in there? No, no work. Okay, so Shane, Sarah. Okay, so yeah, it's just Dino. I'll wait for his thing to refresh. I'm out of his folder. Okay. So I'll check that in two minutes. And let's take a look at this again real quick. And see, there's the blink. Add it in. Let me zoom out. There's the blink again. So the expression's working. As the igloo pops up, you can have little wisps of icy air and little snow balls and debris come out of the ground to help sell that. Maybe a little bit of overshoot as well. That will really help push that. This a little bit of overshoot, a little bit of uh, frosty air and some snow kicking up. That'll look really nice. Okay, everybody listen. This is super important. I got a great question. And I'm glad I got it now. This is critical, so please listen closely. Let's say at home, you are running After Effects 2020. If you work on your file in the studio, if the studio is After Effects 2022, you cannot open an After Effects 2022 file in After Effects 2020. You can always go down the ladder, but you cannot go up, meaning you can always open an older version, but you cannot open a newer version in the older one. But what you can do is, let's try this. Let's pretend I did some work in the studio and I don't want to lose it, and I want to work on it at home in an older version. File, save as, here we go. Let's try save as 18x. That might be version 18. So you could try that. Okay, save the thumbnail because I'm not able to get larger images, that's fine. All right, first, let's try and get rid of this white background. That's gonna distract me. Let's try extract. And let's shift the white point. Soften it a little bit. Okay, that's good for this. Next, I wanna get rid of this on the side, so I'm gonna use a mask. Normally you'd use Photoshop for this. I'm gonna use Subtract in the mask. Okay, now to keep all these effects working, I'm gonna pre-compose. 
and I'll just call this business. Move all attributes. Now all my effects and masks are inside the precom. There's my precomposed person. The puppet pinning tool is right up here. When you puppet pin, it's not just pinning what you want to move, it's pinning what you do not want to move. So if I've got his arm here and I pin there and I move this pin, the whole body moves. Okay, so I'm gonna undo. So what you do is you just select whatever artwork you're gonna do. I pre-compose this, grab your puppet pin, and remember, you add your pins where you want it to move and where you do not want it to move. So it'd be like here, by the elbow, by the shoulder, pin down the chest, same thing, shoulder, elbow, hand. I'm gonna pin the waist. I'll pin the sides of the hips, the knees, and the ankles. So I've pinned down my character. I move to where I want the move movement to start. With the puppet pin tool still select, I just click and drag, move a pin. The more I move it, the faster the motion will be because it's moving faster over time. And there you go. You can move multiple pins at one time. So I select, click, click. I keep holding down shift as I'm clicking. And now I can have the arms move down a little bit. You see the character squashing a little bit. You just gotta watch out for that. Next, I'm going to move the hips a little bit over to the side. I'll show you why in a sec. And I'll go here. I'll move the foot and this foot. Okay, there we go. Now this was a very low res image, but when you puppet pin, it's moving the pixels of the image like such. And he wasn't properly uh, keyed out. So that's how you can animate some uh, photos because it's moving the pixels around. Expansion will, I can click show mesh. See, once I tightened up the expansion, the legs are working properly. You wanna make sure that the whole character is covered by the mesh. See, now I'm getting that same problem again. Let me drop it down. There we go. That fixed it. So four is about good for that. I can click off show mesh. Like such. Remember, I pre-composed everything because I removed the color and I masked out this side. You wanna have higher resolution artwork. So I just grabbed my pre-comp, my puppet pin tool, pinned down what I wanted to move. And what I did not want to move, then I moved the playhead. And with the puppet pin selected, I just grabbed the tools that I wanted to work. Now let's see if we can get more technical with this. I'm a starch pin. So I'm getting rubbery motion. And the reason for that is it's bending in between the bones where it would not be doing. So if I click here with the starch pin, let me hit show. Let's see what happens if I change the expansion on that. Nope. That's changing the mesh expansion. And you know what, with that selected, let's try finding it in here. 
There's where all my pins are. It's this pin right here. Let's twirl it down. Type starch. Okay, good. But it's not letting me expand it. Oh, density. Let's try that. Nope. That's the density of the mesh. It's changing. That's weird. Let's starch that. Starch there. And can I fit one more in there? Okay. Now let's see what our motion looks like. See, now the arms are less rubbery. If I starch in between those bones. And I'll look into what they changed with the starch pin tool. So that's helping a bit. See what happens if I pop the pin on transparent. Didn't really change much. And that is the puppet pinning tool. If you've got a textured character and you like using photos, puppet pinning is great. Uh, you can use it on animals to make it look like they're moving very slowly, like a slow motion filming. There's lots of uses for it. Everyone just remember to keep on working little by little and email me any files I wasn't able to get to. And I will see everyone Thursday night then. Hope you have a great evening and uh, reach out to me if you've got any questions. But uh, so far, what I've seen from everyone, it's looking pretty good. So I'm glad you're all absorbing the material and I hope you're having fun learning how to animate and do motion design along the way.